an amazing place to be because you can stand at your um, at sea level in an urban environment and see a topographical mountain. Very few places in the UK, in the whole world, can you stand in an urban environment at sea level and see a mountain that's almost 15,000 feet high. Um, so one of the reasons the first page is, oh, uh -oh this, is, one this, of mine. this is one of the ones, oh, it should fold up to see this little map of the tectonic plates. And uh, we are in a most unusual spot. You can see the North American continent plate and the huge Pacific plate. And then the Juan de Fuca plate is one of the three smallest in the on Earth. And if you have good eyesight and you know your geography here, you'll be able to figure out where we are in Seattle at this little, little, little junction right there. So um, because of the where we are situated on Earth, we have some amazing scenic views, but we also have some incredible uh, happenings like volcanoes and earthquakes. And it and when Mount St. Helens erupted, it was it was primal reaction. Can you imagine seeing a mountain of a volcano exploding? It was uh, uh, and it didn't just do it once, it sent up spurts and burps all over so people would stop along the freeway and look and see the, the smoke plumes going up in the air. People in eastern Washington were devastated. You couldn't see the, the they were completely blacked out. And everyone was concerned that the ash falling would really decimate the crops. It was the exact opposite. The ashes falling were incredibly beneficial to the soil. And here in, uh, right here where we are, the valley between Lake Washington and Lake Sammamish is incredible volcanic soil. And uh, uh, it, 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 it was quite, quite, a, quite a happening, as you can imagine. Uh, so the next page. Oh, this is, did we do this one? Not right? I don't know. Uh, the, the this is an origami lesson. And, um, so here, here's, here's, I think I, I checked all of them. It's the map of Seattle, and you can see where Seattle University is on there. And you can see when you're at Seattle University, your equidistance, now this is a phenomenon too, your equidistance between salt water and, and a huge body of fresh water in Lake Washington, you're within two, you're with very close by, the two longest floating bridges in the world. Uh, and they're, guess what? They're closed this weekend. What one of them is? Oh, just one of them. 520. Yeah. 520. 520. Don't drive north this weekend. Mm -hmm. Is that why I? Yeah. Okay, so I 90 is Yeah, I 90 is only the same. But also, the viaduct is closed. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay. Driving in Seattle this weekend will be hell. <laughs> Stay here. Uh, the other thing on the map, one of the things that you can see, the Sea Pike Place Market. Now, growing up here, and Pike Place Market is the one place in the world, if I want to feel good about being a human being, I can go to Pike Place Market yeah. and just feel good about being a human being, being part of what people have been doing for thousands of years is putting out the things they made with their hands and sharing them with their fellow human beings or sharing the things that they've actually grown. And that's one of the, well, Jason, you, you explained that better about the, the sellers at Pike Place Market. Uh, so in order to keep the place as lively and as um, archaic as it is, um, you can't use the market to establish rental rates. It would destroy the place overnight. So what the city does with taxpayer help, voluntary taxpayer help, is most of the rents are way below market. So that really encourages creativity, people bringing things to market that otherwise would be unviable. And it's one of the top tourist attractions on earth. That's well, yes, well, that's, that's, that's the uh, ironic thing that happened in the early 70s. 
they wanted the city developers wanted to tear down the market and put up a, a, a well designed uh, buildings and you know a good commercial enterprise and the the, the, the people just rose up and said no Victor Steinbrook of uh, the architect was one of the, the main people who uh, say helped save the market. Well, in the early days, when I took my children there, the, the top of the market is where you walk around, and that's where the, the farm, where all the uh, business goes on. It goes down the hill, and there are levels underneath the hill. And back in the 70s and all these were, it was like a rabbit warren. Um, my, my young boys would, can we go? And they off they go, and they uh, find out that, uh, the people would sometimes open up their storage place and then sell whatever happened to be there. But now that, that's all gone, of course, and, and the levels are now all, all viable uh, places. And as Jason just said, uh, uh, so it's ironic that the city fathers wanted to tear down this place. It is now on the world tourist destination list. And in the summertime, when the cruise ships come, it just, it, well, I, I feel it's destroyed the, 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 how, you, how I felt about the market. Um, so, the other thing that's happened here in Seattle that I don't have any idea, reason for, Seattle has some of the most iconic enterprises in America. Think of, of, of an enterprise. So, Seattle is the home base for uh, Starbucks, Microsoft, Boeing, Costco, UPS, Amazon. I mean, when you think of iconic and, and, uh, and enterprise that has started here and has gone worldwide, yeah, I, it, it's, I, I doubt that there's a, another place that is, has so many iconic industries. And I, I sort of want to tie it in somehow for us being right here on this very, this place that's moving, the one the people play is in constant movement. And somehow, how does that translate into the creativity and the movement that, that exists here within, within Seattle? So, being very Gepsarian now, when we're concerned with time and space, that your little brochure will unfold time, your unfolding time and space, and you will see an, an image of where we are. <laughs> I'm laughing at Natalie because folks, folding this, this, this origami fold is not as simple as it might be. <laughs> I challenge you now to fold, fold it back. <laughs> Um, geographically, uh, I purposely, uh, this, this is uh, Elliott Bay, and it flows into Puget Sound. It flows in and that's uh, ocean water. Here, this is Lake Washington. Here's Lake Union. The house, the famous houseboats are right around here. Uh, there's a better photograph of this back on the back table. Uh, and I should also tell you on the back table, are a few pieces of my artwork. I've been, uh, one of the reasons I found out about Gebser was the work I had been doing on Paul Clay's Angels. And um, so there's some of my etchings of Paul Clay's Angels. And there's also an etching that I did of, of the late Peter. And Peter's last book um, is on the table. Some of you remember Peter. And um, so I can talk to you about uh, the, the etching process. What I love about it is it's uh, back to the Renaissance technique, no electricity, just your muscles. And, um, uh, and I think of that as being very Gibsarian, is the, the, the whole, that whole ancient technique of etching and how that's developed. So welcome to my home. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
go in an interior, into an interiorized feeling for time and the beginnings of space. Dr. Jason Wirth, a keynote speaker. 